I think what has been another th- another theme is that the players that are, who get the unexpected opportunity, they, they tend to take it. There's not been many this season where you've gone, well, he came in and he, he just weren't up to it. The only one yeah. I would really think of would maybe be a couple of the lads in the Europa League, maybe Luke Chambers, for yeah. example, who, who just looked like, okay, yeah, he needs a loan and it was almost confirmed. Ben Doak, to a degree, sort of early in the season, it was a bit like, mm, okay, maybe he needs a little bit more development time. But really, you know, Bobby Clark's done well, James McConnell's done well when he's had to play, Gerald Quans has done well, Joe Gomez has done well when he's had to play somewhere else, Harvey Elliott's done well wherever he's he's had an opportunity. You know, there's a couple of other younger players knocking around the, the 21s well, at the we, moment. Should we, should we just jump ahead and do that then? Because yeah, I think yeah. it's, a, I think it's a, a, a rather than circle back to it. Obviously, I, 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 you're right. You know, Liverpool have got a, a number of players out. They've had, you know, they've had consistent sort of injury issues throughout the season, but at no point is it capsized things. And yeah. what we've seen actually because of the Europa League and also I, I think a clear statement of intent in pre-season was a number of players who've been pushed, who yeah. they feel already have been pushed towards the first team. So the question is, and I've heard you mention a couple of names already, but we can we can we can say them again if needs be. Yeah. But you know, there's gonna we're gonna see more of these young players in the next couple of weeks because we've been seeing them over the last few weeks making the yeah. bench up already. I think we'll certainly see them against Southampton in in the in the FA Cup, if if not in the squad in the team. Yeah. Um, and yeah, of course, you know, there's. I mean, you don't really want to be Nottingham Forest away, but but if you can get it a decent performance in the, against Luton in the first half, first hour, you, you can't get in a position where you might be able to, to cut your cloth. I mean, it's a, you know, that's the best case scenario, of course. You, I don't think we'll be seeing too many of them coming on in the, in the Carabao Cup final or starting the Carabao Cup final because it just isn't, it just isn't sort of that kind of game. You, you don't want to be, you know, I mean, Jürgen's not beyond it, but you don't want to be saying to James Anders, but do you fancy your debut? Do you want to, do you want to go and make your debut at Wembley? And, you know, it's, 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 Unreasonable to, to do that to a young player. But well, we did see um, Clark and, of course, Conor Bradley, who are now yeah. raving as a first yeah. team Liverpool sure player, Kate. came on against Arsenal away in the in in the yeah. FA Cup. So it's not outside. I was possible and Fulham in the in the semi as well. Yeah. Clark came on. Well, I suppose it's look. So what my point is this: you've got Quanta, who's now feels like an established first teamer, even though it's only been six weeks. Feels like Bradley's yeah, effectively yeah. like an established first teamer for Liverpool. Is it Bobby Clark who's the obvious next one? And is there anyone else around that? Yeah, I think Bobby... Uh, I mean, you look at the ones who've been training pretty much all season with the first team. So Bobby ha- has had an injury, but he, st- he had pre-season with the team, obviously. And then and then as soon as he came back, he was pretty quickly actually back into the first team pitch. I think he was... I think he returned on the weekend, on the Sunday, and he was on the bench on the Wednesday. So yeah, Bobby, Bobby Clark most definitely is, is in that mix. I think Kay Gordon would be one... Obviously, A is his talent, the fact that he's been around the first team previously, but also the where he plays, obviously there's the, he's, he's a wide player, so you know, he's he's more possible as a as a substitute in in a game or, you know, someone who, who brings something a bit different. And then James McConnell, obviously, who who um really impressive the the one start that he's had against Norwich in the cup. Um possibly man of the match, wasn't he? I think I think Bradley ended up taking it but it could easily have been McConnell um, so those three would be there I think it's interesting you heard Klopp talk about Jaden Dans and Lewis Kumas he name checked those two uh, I think it was after that Norwich game he, he, he said you know we've got these guys around us they've both been in excellent form this season Kumas you know Dan saw a little bit of him pre-season didn't we yeah yeah Kumas yeah he did he played it over in um, in Germany I went over and he played Karlsruhe uh, he was on the bench in the in the league, uh, Burnley last weekend, and then played on the on the Sunday for the um, for the twenty ones. He's he's a he's obviously very young. He's still you know he's he's actually kind of he's young for the under twenty ones at this moment in time. But he's he is a player who who has got Liverpool qualities about him. You know he he's not just a not just a sort of a a bully at under 18s level who scores loads of goals he actually he actually does a lot of work you know in the game that you see and think well, okay that's a that's a proper sort of all round centre forward Dan's obviously catching the eye with his goals um, this season talk to me a little bit about him because I must admit he's not he's not really Dan's, yeah so he oh, Neil Dan's is, is his father who is a midfielder who played many games you know plenty in the Premier League in, in the Football League for Birmingham Blackburn Crystal Palace Um he, Neil was sort of a diminutive kind of central midfield player. Jaden's a, a tall, 
strong, fast centre forward. Um, is that his mum's side? <laughs> I'm guessing so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so obviously he's a local lad who's been with the club since he was, you know, day dot really, and he he came sort of around at the, the 18 setup last season. You saw him and thought, yeah, he's got a bit about him. You know, I actually remember watching a couple of games last season, sort of springtime, and it wasn't a wasn't a classic under 18 side. It was a little bit of a sort of one of those ones towards the end of the season where a lot of the, the ones have been moved up or some have gone on loan or some are injured. Or, you know. And you sort of end up with this mishmash team, and he was the one player I thought Dan was. He thought, okay, that's that's interesting. And he's come back this season. He looks a couple of inches taller, a little bit wider. I think he's not when when he plays at that level. There are times when he, the ball goes up to him and he looks a bit like someone like Dominic Calvert Lewin, where, mm-hmm. where he's like he's got a real leap on him. He's you know he's sort of he's physically strong. He's also got runs in behind as well so I've, I've heard him talk and I think there was an inter- interview he did last week where he said when I was younger a lot of people can comp- not compare me but talk to me about Firmino and said you know you need to be a number nine he drops in and does all these things and then he didn't say it but then he, he almost said but more recently I've become a bit more like Nunes he, you know he didn't mention Nunes by name but he yeah. said but I've, I've sort of learned the other side of number nine you have to com- continually be making runs in behind you have to you have to stretch the, the, the pitch and yeah. then you, you know you, you get the opportunity to do all these things and it does show in his game it's, look it's 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 under 21's football and it's under you know under 18's football so it, it's a long way up to the first team but he's got an awful lot of attributes about him physically technically you know he can strike the ball Um I don't know if you saw it in the, in the Youth Cup recently. He scored a sort of a, a 35 yard with his left foot, where the keeper was a bit out of position. Then he scored a free kick with his right foot, you know, into the top corner. He's got sort of he's got ability to to hit the ball really well. He's got a good aerial aerial ability. So I think he's a very interesting player. Um, they do like football pedigree as well, don't they? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's a few, isn't it? I mean, Kumas is another one, isn't he? You know, with, with his his father, obviously Jason. Um, there's Carol Figueroa who, who, who's there um, at the academy as well. So yeah, there, there are um, Bobby Clark, another, another one, of course. Just maybe that's just the world we live in now, isn't it? Where we're getting these regens of, uh, <laughs> of players. It was not, wow, it's not his son. Yeah. Oh, was it? Was it Sean Wright Phillips's son? Wasn't it playing for for Manchester City's academy? I think, and he's wow. like, what? Sean Wright Phillips is only twenty one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, I think Dan's and Kumas are both ones that I even even despite this injury sort of thing I would have been thinking okay next this preseason you yeah. probably get a good look at those two um, we've already had a good look at Clark obviously people like Callum Scanlon we, we got a look at um, as I say Chambers who's now on loan can we can we talk about Kate Gordon if you don't mind yeah. obviously you know a couple of years on from him sort of breaking through looked massive prospect you know we're two years on now almost not quite to the day a little beyond that now since he played against Arsenal in the, um, yeah, the League Cup bit more, semi-final yeah. um, I'm really impressed in that one and obviously he had a torrid time with injuries it's interesting because it was a real shock to me when he was on the bench against Toulouse in the in the mm. Europa League so much in so much as like the, the Liverpool subs were warming up 20 yards in front of me and I was like is that Kate Go- okay yeah Sam brilliant yeah. good to see him back and it told a lot that I think it looks from the outside like they're trying to remind him almost or, you know, put their arm around him and go, no, you are very much part of this. But, yeah. you know, it's been very fleeting, the glances that we've seen of him yeah. so far. Yeah, well, he scored He scored on Saturday his first goal since he came back from injury. They beat Newcastle, the 21s, um, away, and he scored K Gordon. I didn't see the game, obviously, Liverpool were playing, the first team was playing at the same time. But he's, he's had so long out and it, it was always going to take possibly the remainder of the season for him to really find, you know, his his feet again and just who who he is. You know, think about it. You know, seventeen to nineteen, and even if you're playing every week, a, a huge sort of peaks and troughs in in your performance levels. Imagine it if you've missed, you know, it was like all of Michael Owen's peak. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, you know, so exactly. Yeah, some people, you know, that's their best years, isn't it? And um, he was. He was right there uh, when he when he he got that injury. He was right in there. You know, he actually played that game. If you remember, Takumi Minamino was on the bench. You know, so it wasn't there was an element of players missing, mm-hmm. but there were senior players that could have played in that game, and he yeah. he was selected. That's how good he was. He saw he scored for the first team. You know, he's he's um, at Anfield. He made his debut in the Premier League, so he was clearly around that first team group. And remember, that was a team that again. 
that was a team that was going for everything yeah. at that time as well. So he's clearly very highly thought of. I watched him as I watched. I don't know if it was his first start, but he played in the um, the what's it called leasing.com I think it's called is it oh, God. is it called I can't remember <laughs> Bristol Street Motors that's it <laughs> Bristol Street Motors uh, EFL trophy I saw him up at uh, Barrow and he played and there was a moment he captained the side and he played on the right and he was very tidy very neat and looked a good you know you could tell he's a good footballer and there was a moment where he got a, a big a heavy challenge and you could almost feel you know the team and the staff sort of went and he, he got up gingerly and he was taken off shortly after and I remember speaking to, to Barry after it and he said, he's all right. He said, you know, he was only ever going to do an hour, but it was sort of like, well, now he's had that, we'll, we'll, we'll cut it five minutes early. So you knew he was going to have to get these things out of his, out of his, his system. You know, yeah. he's, he's going to have to, he's going to have to trust his body. He's going to have to find his fitness, you know, that kind of training thing. It feels like he's not far away from that now. He's played a lot of games. He's, he's playing quite regularly. He's getting 90 minutes. He's scoring goals. He's, he's there. So, I think the next step now is to see where he, where his level is. You know, is he is he still there? Has he dropped a little bit? Has he had to change his game? Does he have to you know play a different way in terms of maybe not being what he was when he was around? Was he was decisive in games when you watched him for under twenty ones? He what he he was talent. He had speed and all that, but he he hit the target with the shots. He got into goal scoring positions. He was a very kind of um, promising sort of numbers player, if you, if you like. So. Whether he's still that, or whether he's he becomes a bit more of a sort of a um, maybe he moves a bit central, or he, he moves over to the other side, you know, I, there are still questions to answer. But he's a player that has got had huge potential, and I think still has got huge potential. He just feels like the forgotten man at the moment yeah. because obviously, I you know Ben Dokes, ben Dokes came in, of course. He, he really sort of exploded into the scene over the last twelve months, and even you've got a lot of talk around Trey Neoni coming through as well. Mm. There's going to come a point where if he doesn't get himself back up to that sort of level reasonably soon, there's going to be other lads coming up from yeah. underneath, and, and, you and, know, and really challenge him. It's ridiculous to say, isn't it? Oh, he's nineteen; he's coming up to twenty. You know. <laughs> Time's ticking, you know. That's uh, it's, it's horrendous to say that kind of thing, but it, it's true, isn't it? You know, time waits for nobody. And like you know, Ben's will be thinking that now he got a bad injury at a, at a bad time, really, didn't he? Where you think oh, there's six months there of like potential game time lost and potential impact, you know, he could really have made on on the team. So yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting to see. But I think when you're asking about who we might see in the team on the bench in the next few weeks if some of these injuries are as bad and, or, or as, as widespread as we think or fear. Kate Gordon is definitely one of them because he's got first team experience. He's got first team training experience. He's of an age where, you know, he needs to be looking at first team exposure anyway, regardless. Mm -hmm. So I think he'd be one of those ones along with Bobby Clark, James McConnell, definitely. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that clip. If you want to watch the full Jano Inside Show, and in fact, the Jano Inside Show with Neil Jones each and every week, head to redmenplus.com. You get it in video form, in podcast form, and there's tons of amazing Liverpool documentaries, podcast features to fill your boots with in the interim period. Cheers. Hey, thank you so much for checking out the content today. If you want to get your name in and amongst these wonderful people, uh, then head to redmenplus.com. Join as a legend tier subscriber. You're going to get free merchandise, merchandise codes. You're going to get in our Discord, and you're going to get your name at the end of YouTube videos. Yes, redmenplus.com, legend tier status.